Hi, this is Kyle for ADSR. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for regular tutorials. Today we're going to be going over how to make vocal traps for future bass. Okay, so right here I have a vocal trap. It sounds like this. The note is C. I know that because if you right click it and click edit, you bring it to Edison. If you right click again, go regions and then detect pitch regions, you'll see it says C6. So we know that this is C. Now this is great for us because then we don't have to mess around with the origin note. But if that were the case, that's really easy. You just click this wrench and then right here you find the note that it is. And then you right click it and it sets that to the root note. Now it is C6, so you know what? I'm going to go in here I'm going to set it to C6. Just be very precise. Okay, so you have this trap here. The first thing you want to do with it, because it's just one note, you just play the one note over and over, it's going to be very boring. So the first thing you want to do is draw in the melody. So I'm going to do that and then I'll be right back. Okay, so here I've drawn in this melody. This is what it sounds like. So it's very marshmallow-like, which I personally like. And the first thing you notice is that it did repeat a little bit. So right off the bat, I'm going to turn off using loop points. So now it'll just play one note every time I hold it. And now if I do hold it, it won't play multiple notes. You see if I put loop points on and do that, this will happen. It'll keep repeating. So the first thing I notice is that there is reverb printed on this sample already. So what I'm going to do to do that, I'm just going to take this out arrow. Drag it slightly. Gonna hit normalize to make up for the game we lost a little bit. Another cool feature in FL20 now is the length knob, which allows you to not even have to use the out. So I'm gonna do that instead. Perfect. The next thing I'm going to do is go with this wrench right here. I'm going to put on Portamento. And this is going to make it slide every time a new note plays. The more you put the slide knob up, obviously, the more it slides. I'm going to adjust this length a little more so it doesn't feel too choppy. Alright, next I'm going to throw it on a mixer track. Just going to hit the track button and it's automatically going to bring it to its own mixer track. So now, first things first, let's put an EQ on it. Let's get rid of any possible low end frequencies that may be hanging around, even though it doesn't seem like there is any. Go raise the high just a little bit. It's already a pretty high sample. Gonna do a quick uh, frequency sweep just to see if there's any problematic frequencies going on. Right here, you can hear there's a little bit of ringing going on in your ear, so I'm just going to take a little bit of that out. And do, I'm going to do one more. Right here. Cool. So I'm going to take a little bit of that out, too. Cool. Next, I'm going to throw on some reverb. I'm going to put the wet down a little bit. Now you want a vocal trap to be pretty wet. In most cases, it's the main lead of the drop. I'm gonna take out some of the low cut. Give it a little more high and put the decay up just a little bit. Next, I'm gonna throw a free delay two on. I'm gonna set it to ping pong. Pan it all the way left, the input, so it travels from left to right. Go lower the volume a little bit and put the time to four so the delay happens on beat. You can kind of hear in your headphones if you're wearing them or speakers. 
I'm also going to lower the cutoff filter a little bit just so it's not super high pitched in the background. That's perfect. Next, I'm going to throw an OTT on it, very slight. I'm actually going to put this above the reverb and delay, just because I don't want it to really uh, oversaturate it. I'm going to put the depth probably on 20. Looks like we're going to have it more around 42, 45. The output gain up a little bit too. Now it sounds super crispy. The last thing I'm going to do is just add a kickstart on it to give it a nice little bounce that will work pretty much no matter what the drums are. Okay, so that was how I make vocal chops for Future Bass. Alright, I want to thank you all for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more tutorials. For ADSR, this is Kyle, signing out. <laughs>